Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test Tech. Today we're going to be applying the settings for the Flight Test Guardian Gremlin. Uh, we have a dump for beta flight that allows you to copy paste almost all the settings to pre-configure it or uh, spectrum using the stack that comes in the value kit. So what you're going to need for this, you're going to need uh, your Guardian Gremlin. Uh, we've got this one built to the point until we go to put the top plate on, that way we can easily access it. You're going to need a USB cable uh, and you'll need a computer, either Mac or Windows running Betaflight. We'll have a link to download Betaflight down in the description. And so let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Betaflight. So I've got Betaflight Configurator opened up here. So I'm gonna take the USB cable and I'm gonna plug it right into the USB port on the side of the flight controller. We should see the light come on. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult to get the USB cable in. If that's the case, just remove the standoff that's blocking its way. And then you'll see up here in the top corner, uh, you'll see COM and then a number. That is going to be your actual drone's flight controller. Uh, and then click connect. If it doesn't connect, click the little arrows and select the other one in case there's two showing up. Uh, one of those should eventually connect. So we'll click connect and give it a second to get in here. So once we're in here, you can grab the drone and you'll see the little picture of the drone on the screen move around. So that means we're talking to the right device. And first thing we're going to do, since this one is set up with the LiminarX satellite, it is ready to go for Spectrum, but we just need to apply the settings for it. So we actually will have a file available to download, and that's going to be what's called a diff, which is where we already had a Gremlin set up, and what we did was we just gave all the settings that we used on it, and you can just copy paste those to copy ours. So once we open up the file here, we're just going to drag to select everything, then right click to click copy. And then we'll go on back over to Betaflight and we'll go down to the option CLI, which is gonna be command line interface. And once it finishes building the cache, we'll just go down here where it says write your command, we'll right click and paste, and then we'll just hit enter. Once it finishes, it'll restart and we'll have all of our settings pre-applied. So we'll just reconnect back up to it again. All right, so now we're back in here again. So now if we go to modes, we should see that arm and angle are set. So next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and bind the receiver. Now spectrum satellites work a little bit different. If you have like an FR sky or radio master receiver, uh, you more than likely will use a bind button on the receiver. For these spectrum receivers, you actually have to use a command to bind those. So we're gonna go back to the CLI. And since we're gonna be binding to a DSMX quad, we're gonna type in set. Uh, spectrum underscore sat underscore bind and we're going to do equals nine. There's a couple different values you can use but nine is going to set it to bind in DSMX which is going to be the best for the spectrum radios. So once we send that the one other thing we have to do is we have to type in save to tell it to remember that and then once it reboots we're going to go ahead and unplug it. So I unplugged it from the computer and we're going to grab our radio. We're just gonna, so this is a DX9. It should be the same for most Spectrum radios. We're just gonna go on to the menu. It's a system setup. And then go to the bind menu. And then once we're ready to bind, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the quad again. And we're gonna watch the receiver. And we should see a light start flashing really quick on the receiver. So we're gonna go on the radio, hold it a little distance away, click the bind button. There we go. And now, if we go onto the computer again and connect. All right, so now we're back in the beta flight again. We're gonna go on over to the receiver tab. We're gonna check and make sure everything's going the right directions. So you give it a throttle up and throttle down. Then we're gonna give it a yaw. So our yaw is backwards, so we'll need to fix that. Roll, we give it pitch. We see the pitch is working fine. So if we notice on our radio, when we look down here at this little preview, little picture of the quad, when I give it roll, it actually spins in yaw. And when I give it yaw, it spins in roll. It's going to be a little confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the top of the channel map. Uh, that channel mapping would be correct for a radio master radio, but we're going to go ahead and use spectrum. So we're going to select spectrum here, and that should change it. And we'll just click save, and then immediately it should be back to normal. Again, my yaw is still backwards and roll is still backwards, but now they're responding to the right sticks. So to fix them going backwards, we're just gonna open up the menu on the radio, go to servo list, 
And we're gonna select travel and switch that to reverse. And I'm just gonna select aileron and rudder. If you told the radio that you were using a multi-rudder, those will actually be replaced with yaw and roll instead of aileron and rudder. It's the same difference, it's just they, instead of referring to it as the, the control surface, they refer to it as the direction. So now if we take a look, pitch works fine, roll works fine, and yaw works fine. All right, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do now that we know the radio is set up well, we're gonna go ahead and turn the radio off. And we're gonna do this process with the props taken off still. We have not put the props on quite yet. We're gonna go on over to the motors tab in Betaflight. And we are gonna test to make sure the right motors are going the right direction and they're reacting to the right inputs. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in a two cell here. So once we have that plugged in, we're gonna go over here and this is, this little warning over here is telling you that this will spin the motors up and that if you have the props on, it can be dangerous. And we're agreeing that we took the props off, we're all good to go. And the way we want the props to go is we want it to where the motor is going to rotate. It's where if you had a stick on the end of it, the stick would come and it would hit the back of your flight controller. Or on the front side, it would come and it would hit the front of it. So another thing is when you go to test spin up your motor, if it does like a little jitter where it just goes back and forth and doesn't actually spin up, you want to stop immediately. That means you either have a bad connection to the ESC or one of your motor wires is just not making contact either with the motor or the ESC. If you keep doing that and you keep trying to force it and it's just jittering back and forth uh, nonstop, then it can eventually cause damage to your motor or ESC. And then we're gonna go over here to this slider, motor number one. And if we look at the little diagram here, we can tell this one right here is gonna be motor number one. We're gonna go ahead and try spooling it up. So we see it spins. Then I'm actually going to take a piece of scrap, a piece of paper works fine. We're just gonna push it into the motor and we can see it pushes out of the way. We can see this motor is actually going the wrong direction. So we gotta remember number one's wrong and we'll fix that in a moment. So then we're gonna try number two, which is gonna be this motor right here. So we're gonna spin it up and we see it spins. Motor number two is also going the wrong direction. The two ways to fix that are going to be, you can either go into a piece of software called BL Heli Suite, and that'll allow you to change the settings for each ESC, or you can swap any of the two wires on that motor. So then we're gonna go to number three, which is gonna be this guy right here. We're gonna... Number three is going the right direction. It kicks the right way. Number four, check him. Number four is also going the wrong way. So then I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to leave the battery connected because the ESC has to be powered on for us to make these changes. We're gonna disconnect from Betaflight. And we're gonna open up BL Heli Configurator, which, which we'll put a link to also down in the description. And it looks a lot like Betaflight and we just gotta make sure Betaflight is disconnected. If you're connected to Betaflight, you cannot connect to BL Heli. We're going to go ahead and click the connect button. We're going to go ahead and make this bigger. So once we're connected here, we're going to click this button down here that says read setup. And after a few moments, it'll pop up. And so we need to change motors one, two, and four, because three was perfectly fine. So we're going to see ESC number one right here. We select motor direction reversed. Then ESC number two, we're going to do motor direction reversed. ESC3, our motor was doing fine, so we're not going to mess with that one. And ESC number four, we're going to go ahead and reverse that one too. So once we have them all set how we want, we're going to click a right setup. And we'll give it a moment. And once we see up here in this top corner, it says reading setup finished. We can go ahead and disconnect from BL Heli. We'll open up Betaflight again. And we'll just double check on to make sure that they're correct. Go over to the motors tab. We understand the risks and our props are off. So we'll spin number one. And now if we check it, motor one is going the right direction. We'll check number two. Number two is going the right way. Number three. 
is going the right way. And then number four is going the correct way. Okay, so we, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our mode switches on our radio. So we need to have a mode switch for arm and angle. Arm is gonna be what tells your motors to spin up and then angle mode is gonna be your self-leveling mode. If you don't have any mode selected, then it's acro mode, which is where when you push forward and you let off, it'll stay there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the radio here and we're going to go down to system setup. And then once we're in system setup, we're gonna go down to channel assign. We're gonna go over to channel input config and uh, channel number five is going to be our arm channel. So we're gonna select that. And then, so I want it to be A, which it was already set up for. And then number six is going to be our mode. So I'm gonna select the one I want here, which is number B, letter B. And now, if we go into beta flight, we got to go all the way back. So we go back to the main screen. If we go in beta flight, now my arm switch triggers the arm and my mode switch lets me select angle mode. And you can see there's a little yellow tab down here, that little tiny little yellow piece that moves around when I flip the switches. That is telling me where the switch is. So all you want to do is let's say I want angle mode to be the middle of the switch. So I find the middle position. I'm just going to drag this orange bar so that way it sits right over that tab. And that tells me that that's now set up for that position of the switch will be angle mode. So our next step is going to be to put our props on the gremlin and then we're actually going to put the top plate on it and then we'll be ready for the first flight. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our quad and we're actually going to put our props on. So one thing you want to remember is that we want the leading edge of the prop going past the front. So both these guys will turn this way and the high edge will go towards the front and out the sides. So we'll go ahead and put both these on here. We're just gonna press fit them on for the moment. We'll screw them down here in a moment. And then again with the back, you want to where it pulls the leading edge into the back and out the sides. All right, so we're gonna grab our screws here. We're just gonna drop them into the hole sure they line up with the screw holes. We're just gonna not to put them too, too tight, just tight enough that they're not gonna come off. The big thing you wanna remember is that these are tiny motors. You wanna make sure that your screws on top are the same on both sides. So you're gonna use the same length screws and you never wanna put an odd number of screws if you have an even number of screw holes. Go to the last one in and again, the leading edge pull into the front and pull into the back. So now we're gonna get the last piece. It's gonna be our top plate. We're just gonna line it right up. Grab our first nylon screw. Uh, these nylon screws are plastic. That's for weight. You don't wanna torque on them too hard because you can strip them out. If you try to torque on them way too hard, you just need to get them tight enough that they're not gonna loosen up. And there we go. So it's ready for its first flight. All right guys, join us in the next one when we're actually gonna take this for its first flight. We're gonna give you a bunch of tips and tricks to having a successful first flight with your Dremlin.